in the name of Jesus. Father, for I cannot do anything without the Spirit of God, O oh Lord Almighty God. Father, you say you will send the helper, O oh Lord. Helper, I need you, O oh Lord Almighty God. Father, that that you want to do through the word, my Lord and my God, do it today in the name of Jesus. And let your name and your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we all sit? We may sit majestically in the presence of your husband in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Men, you can decide to stand if you want to because today is our day. And we're going to do what we want. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our theme for this women's program is called, say, is called The Watchful Woman. The Watchful Woman. Hallelujah. The Watchful Woman. Almighty God, we help us to be watchful even as we wait on him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, the read, reading for today will be taken from Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Verses 1 to 13. Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. It's one that is very common. We all know this. But we often need to go back and remind ourselves. Hallelujah. Yes. I read. Verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold! The bridegroom come, go ye to meet him. Then all those virgin arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish, foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No so, let there be no, let there be no enough for us and you. But ye rather go then that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I said unto you, I know you not. Verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we will not be left behind in the name of Jesus. When he comes to collect us, we will be ready and available to go with him in the name of Jesus. The title of my uh, word today, it's Will You Be Ready? Can you please ask your neighbor? It's a question. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? When it comes, will you be ready? That familiar story, that familiar story that we just read, if you notice in, in, um, in uh, verse 10, it says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage. We will all maybe and attend the marriage with him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All that these virgins need is to have their lamp ready. He said to be trimmed and to have a, a oil available and for it to be burning when the bridegroom comes. All that we need to do before Christ comes 
Holy Spirit will help us to do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, going further down, that story, when you look into it, when he says, when Jesus came, he said, uh, he said when the bridegroom came, he said they trimmed the alarm. That means they tied it up. Because if you know what a lamp is, sometimes when after being used so many times, the the wick that you use it's fill up the ashes and all that stuff, and you're going to have to maybe make sure you shake it off and wipe it and put more oil in it before you light it. If you don't do all that, it might not work. So therefore, that means, as we also are getting ready, there are some things that we need to get done. Hallelujah. There are some things that need to be done. In Luke chapter 5, verse 35, Luke 5, 35, he said, but the day will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. So that means there's a time that the bridegroom will be taken away. Jesus was taken away. He came in an image of a man to dwell among men. And when the time came, he was taken away. Hallelujah. But then in John 14, Two to three, it also says, he reminded us that the reason why I'm going away, he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am, there ye may also be. A promise. So I'm gone. But remember, I'm still coming back to get you. Hallelujah. He went for that in Revelation 3.11. He said, Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. No one will take our crown in the name of Jesus. No one will take our crown in the name of Jesus. Also in Revelation 22, 12. He said, and behold, I am coming quickly again. He said, and my reward is with me. I give man according to his work. So he has made specification that look, so I am going. But remember, I'm going to make, prepare a mansion. I'm going to my father and I'm taking account and I'm looking down and I'm saying this one is coming. That one is coming. This one is coming. Your name will be mentioned in the name of Jesus when it is time to go. Yeah. My name will be called among those people that are be, will be going in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But look in that Revelation 22. It says, my reward is with me. That means I have it. There is no bribing. There is no hanky-panky. When I come, that, that I know deserve it, they will get it. Amen. You will get your reward in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will get your reward in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that led me to think about, so that means also we as Christians, there are things that we need to do in our lives. We have given ourselves, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. Well, maybe you have not yet made that decision yet. I don't know. But maybe after you hear this today, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will minister unto you to make that decision in the name of Jesus. Now, by one point that I put down, I said that means we need to tidy up. We need to get clean up. We need to be purged. Lamentation 3.40. Lamentation 3.40. Hallelujah. He said, let us search out and examine our ways. Turn back to the Lord. Just 
simple. He says, search out. What is it that you are doing? You have said, I've given my life. You come to church, and when they sing, lifting up holy hands, your hand goes up. And when you say, I have decided to follow Jesus, you're still singing it. Have you turned back? Have you turned back? Isaiah 1, 16. He said, wash yourself and make yourself clean. Put away evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. What is it that when you have said, I am a child of God, I am a believer, I am a born again Christian. The word of God says, he said, behold, all things. He said, if a man is in Christ, he said, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. That means where I used to go before, before I called myself that, Lord, I want to come with you. I have put it aside. I'm not going there anymore. Those things that I'm looking at that is not befitting to Christ, I have turned away 360 degrees from them. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians 4, 17. He said, This I therefore say, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. That means don't behave as if you are still in the world. Don't let it be that when only we come to church, that people see the saints in you. Let it be everywhere you are going. Let somebody say you are weird. And ask about you and say, what about you? You are so weird. And say, you know what? Because I'm a Christian, I am weird for Jesus. Because of the things that I do before, I don't do them anymore. Hallelujah. Amen. We're moving along. Yes. 2 Timothy 2.21 He said, If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto good works. That means that if indeed you are torn around and you have caught yourself, we're talking about tidying up. You have decided bit by bit to take all those things that make you to enjoy the things of the world that you think there's no other way, better life. You know, some people when they are lost in, they'll say, this is enjoyment. They oh, this is enjoyment. There's no any enjoyment until you come to know Jesus. We were talking about it this morning in, uh, mid, uh, in, the, uh, in the Sunday school, and somebody says that when you are new, when you are in Christ, he says you you begin to we, we mention different things that you begin to walk differently, you do things differently, you bust and you are filled with joy. I remember that Joe was saying that when he prayed for one of the sons, one of the people that I guess one of the pastors, he said. He said he gave his life to Christ. He said, and he prayed, and he turned around, and you know, he's. He said, when he now, after I think a year, when he met the pastor again, he said, and the pastor said, Sir, can I see you, sir? And then he said, Oh, sure, fine. He said, I just need to ask you a question. He said, Is there something wrong when after you give your life to Christ, you are just always happy, always bubbling, always rejoicing, always want to sing? And I just said, he looked at me and said, no, there's nothing like wrong with that. Because that is the joy of the Lord overflowing in you. The joy of the Lord will overflow in you in the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord will overflow in you in the name of Jesus. Please go with me to Luke. I want to let us look at this story. Luke 19. Luke 19. About Zacchaeus. About Zacchaeus. 
Luke 19. He says, Zacchaeus, he said, he's, I'll start from verse 2. He said, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who was and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Verse 5 says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus too. Can you see that story? Zacchaeus has decided that today, today, I know this Jesus. So Zacchaeus must have been hearing about this good man going about doing good. He's coming this way. And I've heard that everyone that go out to meet him, he does great things and wonderful things in their life. And he invites them along. He says so. The Bible says he was a, of short stature. He said he can't see because the crowd was so many. But he was determined. He was determined. The Bible says he climbed the tree just to see. You know, as I was reading that, I was saying, Jesus, I'm sure, knew that today Zacchaeus will make every attempt to, to tidy up his life and to come and go with him. So even Jesus himself said, the moment, even before he started, he said, come down. But if you notice further, as he called him, oh, accusers of brethren, they already come. And it happens so at us. Immediately you give your life. Immediately you begin to walk right. Immediately you begin to do the right thing. Satan will come. Oh, you think you are all that. You think you are all that and a bag of chips. You, I saw what you were watching two years ago, I remembered. I knew where you used to go and I know those things that you used to do. It will begin to bring those things so you can be weakened in faith and want to relent. We will not relent in the name of Jesus. But immediately, because Zacchaeus decided that today, nothing will stop me. Immediately, he begins to shout those things that he has done. Hallelujah. In verse 8, he said, and, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, in half of my goods, I gave it to the poor. And if I have taken anything, anything from any man, by false accusation, I restore him back fourfold. He said, he already went and tied it up. That today, those things that might want to hinder me, I'm taking them out. Amen. It's your money, please take it. I remember, I remember I choked you that day to collect your money. Here is your money back. I remember when I entered your house, I said, that's in you and the pussy that you put there. We are eating it together. And I will have 90% of it. He said, I made sure I bought them back. I went to Mosaic and I bought it back. He began to confess quickly and said, Lord, I've done all this, so I'm, I'm right. But you know, Jesus knew that. He said, don't worry. Let them talk. Today, I'm coming with you. You are coming with me. And we are going to dine at your house. We will dine with Jesus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said, I said, you prepare yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. After you have tidied up, you put things in place, you shake up, you keep pornography moving, you keep lying, you decided to, you know, to give a double kick to stealing, to any kind, to, to evil thoughts, to evil deeds, all those things, you tidy tidied up. But because you know the enemy will come back again, then you begin to prepare yourself. Ephesians 5.10 He said, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. What is acceptable? 
you begin to take those things, you see what is it that God wants me to start doing. You begin to, and where will you get it? You go into the word of God. I begin to search the scriptures. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not say. This is the book of the Lord. You shall meditate on it day and night. You don't keep it under your pillow. You begin to test. You begin to desire. You begin. The Bible says that when you are a baby, you will drink milk. But then when you grow up, uh -uh, I have cleaned up. Now I need to know who this my husband is. We need to come to familiarize so we can be able to fellowship together very well. You begin to see what he likes. You will be no ladies. The first time that you get married, uh uh. This one, you don't know, maybe he likes his food very, very hot, half hot, small cold. So if you bring it warm, you say, oh, mm -hmm. the food I don't like, he, he, can, can you please warm it for me? <laughs> oh, brother, God bless you. You are one out of a many. <laughs> The first thing you want.
want to say is say back. And to remember. They <coughs> oh, you might come out of your cell. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> the Lord will help your infirmity. Because it's an infirmity. My infirmity is healing. And you, your infirmity need to heal. That is all you will see. My husband once said, ah, that fellowship you guys are going, it's very good though. Continue to go. <laughs> and that is why I can stay with him. Because my mom says, you are gone. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't find you for him. And he did, he did come where you guys meet each other. Stay. Anything that happened, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> so now, for 16 years, I'm going strong. Hallelujah. Yeah. And all of us that we did not need to touch, that did not need to make, did not need to get us prepared for him, he will do it. By fire, by force, the Lord will prepare us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Moving forward, Ephesians 6, 11, we say, put on the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. In your preparation, you put on the whole armor of God. Hallelujah. In also in Ephesians 5, I will say, he said, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is for you. In your preparation time, you begin to ask for God, what is the reason for my existence? Why do you create me? Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, what do you want me to finish before you come? Lord, what do you need to mend and sow in my life before you come? The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. That all that need for us to be wise and to get understanding. The Bible says, you know that I get you. Get wisdom and get understanding. Hallelujah. We also in James 4 7, he says, Submit yourself therefore to God and resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. We have said it, that the enemy will keep coming. You know, devil is a very good study of character. He knows where you are so weak. You know when you go to interview, the reason why they ask you for that question and say, can you tell us your weak point? It's because they want to see how you use that weak point, turn it around to benefit their company. So Satan also know that you have that weakness. And that is why he will come and he will come and just die, die whatever that weakness it is. He will come and bring it all the time. Is it temper? Is it argument? Is it stealing? Is it prostituting? He will bring those things every now and then. So people, you know, because they lost, they are married though, but they go after other people's husband. Now God has saved them. Their sugar daddy is the supplier to them. They don't think of God as their supplier. But now that they have moved and said, you know what, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to focus on God. That's when that man with Lamborghini and bling bling come. Driving by, coming back. Calling them sweetie, calling them sissy. Appreciating them. Sometimes you give gifts. And that's because... You know, Satan already went and used that person and said, that one, he loves me. He loves to be showered with gift. He will go back and tempt them. We will not be tempted in the name of Jesus. Yeah. That verse said, we should flee when you see it. I remember one of our pastors here was giving a testimony. I said before he gives his life, he said he admires women very well. He likes them. Mm -hmm. He said, so he, after he gave his life now, he said he had to take a, car, a class, a computer class. He said, come and see all the people that they put in that class. Nice package women in the class, the one that will wear tops. 
that will be here and they have to take class together. He said, begin to say, Lord, help me. All these ones, they are my sisters in Jesus' name. I will not look at them. They are all sisters. They are all sisters. I'm not going to. He said, to the glory of God, he finished that class. He finished that class gratefully that he did not stumble. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us. We will not fail. We will not fall in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Another thing is that we need to be obedient. We must be obedient. He said, if ye be willing, Isaiah 1, 19, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the fruit of the land. We will all eat the fruit of the land in the name of Jesus. We have to be obedient. Romans 13, 14 says, he said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for flesh to fulfill the lost thereof. Put on Jesus Christ. Part of your preparation as you go in and if you know what your weakness is, Lord, I like to fight you, but Lord, today, anybody that trouble me, I will not look, my eyes will not see them, I will take my eyes away, they will even come beside me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I fire by force, I separate me and them, I will not see them, nobody will say anything to annoy me. Is it stealing? You begin to say, Lord, my eyes will not see other people's things. I will not covet other people's things. I will not take, Lord, Jehovah, help me. You begin to prepare yourself to stand right. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The next thing I say, which is now the most important thing, we have to be watchful. We have to be watchful. He said that those those ten virgins, say ten of them, they were all ten in number. Five of them were wise, five were foolish. When you know that the bridegroom is coming, the one that I went and prepare a place for you, that is about to come anytime. And you know that you don't have enough oil. Would you have gone and buy your own oil while you were sleeping and slumbering? They now stay there when the wise one is sitting there. And when it's time for the Lord to come, the bridegroom to come, they started begging. Please, can I borrow? Even me, I will say borrow. Borrow, borrow, call borrow me. <laughs> because I want to, that's something we say in Yoruba. You know, that you mean, yeah, come get it. I'm not sharing. I'm going. What if I share? And then I don't have enough. I'm not going to be left behind. So that is why even in our life, as we are being watchful, there are some times, and I believe that sometimes, God brings situations into our life to make us stronger, to get us ready. And in those times, I pray that his grace will be sufficient for us in the name of Jesus. around and make it straight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is it that your mouth you cannot see people, see people without tearing them down with your mouth? But as God use you, you will use that mouth to begin to bless people. Amen. You will use that mouth to begin to preach. Amen. You will use that mouth to begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is it your heart that cannot stay still that wants one person say one thing? What? They say, hold on, what? You say the Bible says, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You turn the Bible immediately to favor you. But in the name of Jesus, that hand, you'll be using it to lift Jesus up in the name of Jesus. He said, be watchful. And I'll go quickly. Luke 21, 36. He says, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We will all stand before the Son of Man in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Mark 13, 32 to 33, he said, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, not angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. He said, Take it, watch and pray, for you do not know when the time is. You don't know. I told my daughter the other day, I said, you know what? 
we know these friends, they are doing all kind of things. And they'll say, you know, oh, we will hide, we won't, yeah, our parents won't know. Our parents will not find out. I say, me, I'm a different mom. I say, because I pray. On my knees, I pray. And then, the day I gave back to you, I sold you back to God. So he's the one that is watching. So if you go socialize with friends and go where you were not supposed to go, I said, God will, he will, he will reveal. He will tell, he will open it up like a video. I said, and I will see it all in the name of Jesus. Those things that you are not supposed to do, that friends are trying to use manipulation to tempt you and all that. I said, if you do not stand and say, ah, hey, I'm a Christian. And I don't know when God will come. Because my mother tell me, hell is real. There's a time God gave me a revelation of heaven. And all I noticed in that dream was, there were so much obstacles. And all of us were running a lot of people. I said, there's some times we have to walk on a thin rope. And people were like maneuvering, just, we were all running to get somewhere. Sometimes it will be like this, start up, start up, start up, and we are all trying to maneuver to get around it. I said, by the time we now get to where we are going, there were fewer people than so many people that were coming. And it hurt my spirit in that dream. I was almost in tears that, well, look, so many of us were coming. We all went through this, we crawled through the mud, we went through this thin road, we climbed, we do all these things. Now, how come they are not here? So after I begin to console myself and say, okay, so they now say we should move to another room. And I say, oh, that means everybody's there. That means I will see them there. And when I got there, nobody were there. There were fewer people also. And it just hurts my spirit in that. It's like almost crying in my dream. And when I wake up, I begin to pray. And God was telling me, that is what it will be like. We will know, we know no flesh shall be left behind in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those things that we need to do, as we need to stand firm, Almighty God will hold us by the wrist and help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Ephesians 6, 18, it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always. We need to pray always. That is our means of communication with our maker. That is the way of developing our relationship. She said the, the, the reason why he, he created us to fellowship. Part of when you pray, we fellowship. When you sing song, you feel his presence. You feel him, you talk to him. Sometimes you, you, you find it like after the whole thing fell, you'll be like, who am I talking to? You have conversation. And you begin to get repairs, you get conversation, you talk, you get repairs, you get you talk. Then after the whole thing, you'll be like, what do you mean? Who was I talking to? But every conf everything that you, you were talking about, you get answer back, you get good answer, and it tells you, don't do this, don't do this. You shouldn't do that, you shouldn't go. The Bible tells us, say we should commit our ways into the hands of God. Say you will lead and you will direct us. Amen. Amen. Revelation 21 7. He said, He who comes. Revelation 21 7. He said, He who overcomes shall inherit all things. How many things? All things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Also, Revelation 16 15 said, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garment. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. They will not see our shame in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, there are some people standing there. They will look at us and say, Hmm, oh, where should go again? On Tuesday. Yeah, Jesus. That means Jesus' mom. She go Tuesday. On Wednesday, they have a fasting and praying. She's there. Thursday, she's there. We will see what we be her end. But in the name of Jesus. They will not see our shame. Amen. And lastly, in Matthew 24, 44. And as you read this, please everybody read. Can you open? Matthew 24, 44. And 
Matthew 24, 44. He said, therefore, are we there? Therefore, be ye also be ready, for in such an hour as ye think, not the Son of Man coming. 44. 24. Hallelujah. He said, we should be ready, be watchful. Be ready, be watchful. Get yourself ready. You do not know. Rapture can happen any moment, any time. Will you be ready? Even as we are thinking about it, while we stand on our feet, can we just ask ourselves, Lord, will I be ready? Will I be ready? Will I be ready? Here is the time. Is at hand. The Bible says no man knows the time or the hour. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father, Father, as you have gone, O oh Lord, to prepare a place. Father, as you have gone to prepare a place, O oh Lord Almighty God. Father, let me be part of those that we attain the marriage of our God. Father, need to pray. I'm just saying, Lord, provide there's anything in me that he might be holding me back, that is not part of this, that I'm seeing him as the salmon comfort. Want to be an hindrance, Holy Spirit. Help me, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. That's something I have no power of my own. Lord, help me, O oh Lord, that I will make it gloriously. That I will not be put to shame. Father, because you say you are coming for the church without spots or wrinkle, O oh Lord. Father, let me be found worthy, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, search me, O oh Lord. Help me to tidy up to prepare my way, O oh Lord, and help me to be watchful. In the name of Jesus. Father, help me, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord. Father, I am not perfect, O oh Lord, Almighty God. But your word say, be ye, be perfect. As your Father, who is in heaven, Lord, help me to be perfect. Help me to watch my way, O oh Lord, and tidy up and prepare in the name of Jesus. That I will not be left behind, O oh Lord. At the sound of the trumpet, O oh Lord, Almighty God, I will not be left behind. My Lord and my God, we pray. Father, help us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise, O oh Lord. Father, we give you glory, Almighty God. Father, that as we are here today, O oh Lord, Almighty God, that this word of today will not stand against us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh Lord, for a glorious day. Let your name be glorified, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We believe that the message you have heard has transformed and inspired you. The only way we can earn God's respect is to live our lives according to the scriptures. We pray that God will help our inabilities as we work towards perfection. In Jesus' name, amen. For prayer and counseling, please contact us. We are the Redeemed Christian Church of God Christ Chapel. And we are located at Unit 7, 250 Bayview Drive. Barry, Ontario, L4N 4Y8. Our telephone number is 705-737-9216 or 416-579-4526. You can also locate us on our website at www.rccgbarry.org. Jesus is Lord. Amen.